So he's shoving, and this movement is used to break the shove. He's coming to put his hands on the chest, I'm raising the hands in front of me, and I'm spreading his force out on the outside. Now, this in itself does a nice thing. It stops me from getting shoved. However, there has to be a follow-up, and there has to be some footwork. So let's say he shoves, and I step back. The next part is to seize his arms. Now, if we see in the form, we come up, and then we come back and down. It's the same thing here. Up, back, and down. I grasp his arms. Now from this position, it's my choice whether I would like to kick to the groin, strike to the face, one more time. Side. this time raising the hands and taking them off to one side. It, it puts me in a very good position to use other techniques. This one would be called brush knee. The ward off will be with the left hand. I would then step in. As I step in, I'm, my intention is to break his structure. So as I step in, I'm causing him to lose his balance. Once the balance is lost, the brain seeks to restore balance first. Any type of attacking or fighting back comes secondary. So I'm giving myself a little bit of a window where he's worried about regaining his balance. Anyway, I step in, and as I do that, I use this ward off arm underneath the armpit. I use the back of the arm or the shoulder and I send force through the center of his Turn my body, and I apply force at the elbow with this arm, the right arm. This was the ward off arm, the left arm. This was the ward off arm, he steps in and punches. I stop the attack, I step in, and I use press. Um, in a push hand situation, this is a, a drill uh, used in Tai Chi called push hands. We're going around. Many times we'll find that as the arms are moving, this, this naturally occurs. And at this point, uh, we step in and use the unified energy coming up from the legs, through the spine, out into the hands, into the opponent. So this is called press. Push. Um, push is an interesting technique. Many people think of push as being an upper body, um, upper body strength skill. It's not. Push comes from the ground. Um, what, what happens is, once I have my hands in a place where I feel secure on him, the energy comes from the floor. I'm pushing against the floor with my rear foot. That force is causing a rebound effect up my spine and out through my arms into my hands. So what looks like an upper body um, technique is really coming from the ground. It can be used in the following way. If he's punching and I take the attack off, I can simply put another hand on his body, I'm sealing his arm with one hand, and pushing with the other. So in this case, it was the left hand that was substantial, and the right hand that was simply acting as uh, a feeler or a checking arm to keep, make sure he's not hitting me. And I'm pushing for um, Another way to use push, uh, let's say that he's coming in to give me a push. I break that push, and I return with push. So we break it and then return with push. Um, and he pushes forward. What happens is he feels that he thinks he has something substantial to push on, which if he did, I would get thrown. But what happens is I'm listening through this arm. I'm paying attention to his energy, where his center of gravity is, what his intention is. And as he begins to move, I'm taking away what he thinks he's going to push on. Very important concept now called neutralization. We have yielding and we have neutralizing. They're separate things. One is incomplete and one is complete. To yield simply means this. If he's pushing on my arm, I move it back out of the way. To neutralize, however, push, means that I'm moving it back and out of the way, but also rotating to affect his balance. So a neutralization, as he builds up force on my arm, a neutralization push tends to let him, uh, or tends to have him become the off-balance person. His intention is to off-balance me, but he becomes off-balance. So let do, do a slow, steady push. Right? So as this happens, 
his spine is turned and he becomes easy to push. I'm blocking. I can do I can block palm facing me, palm facing out, palm facing to the side. And using this hooking hand, when you hook the hand and, and drop the fingers, this is a very, very strong point, the bent wrist. The nerves separate over this bone and it's a very strong striking surface. So again, uh, that punch, boom. Striking and blocking at the same time. If you notice, I'm also zoning away from his opposite hand. What does that mean? If I face an opponent, he has two or uh, he has four weapons essentially: his legs and his arms, elbows, fists, knees. But simply, it's it's four limbs. If he's punching me with this hand and I stay right here and block this, what's to say he's not going to hit me with that other hand? I'm, I'm right in range. I'm, I'm lined up for him to hit me. So what I try to do is when he hits, I try to zone away from that other hand, taking away his option of hitting me again with that hand. Now, it's not always possible to do that, but it's something to keep in mind. Another way single whip is used, um, if he's punching with this hand, the, 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 as the punch comes in, the punch is intercepted, the hook is formed, and we step forward or slide forward and strike. Now, sometimes we have the opposite hand and foot in front, sometimes we don't. So let's see that again. One, two. Another way is if we're sort of grappling, and I use the hooking hand to simply separate his arm or move it away, while I strike with the other. It's called play guitar or raise hands. The first one is called raise hands. The second one, as it appears in the form, is called play guitar. Um, what it's used for, really, um, the inside hand, or the hand closer to you, is used to uh, attack the wrist. The other hand is used to attack the elbow. Now, in the form, it's very gentle, and the foot is on the heel, and it's very nice, peaceful movement. In real life, what's happening is that I'm going to do it over here so there's no damage. This hard force is applied to the wrist and the elbow at the same time, pushing the elbow against the grain, going in a direction it's not meant to go. So at the same time, breaking the arm, the foot is used to either check his front foot, in other words, prevent it from doing anything, stepping or kicking, or at the same time, it's used to kick the knee.